again everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and today I will be speaking with you all about the chest expander, also known as strand pulling. Now this exercise instrument has truly been lost in time, but was one of the most commonplace exercise implements during the late 1800s and the early 1900s, even up until the 1950s. Almost every bodybuilder, every strength athlete used one. De depicted here is the monarch of musledom himself, John Grimmick, using one. And I really think this instrument shines in a home gym because it really helps you target a lot of different muscle groups that would otherwise be very diff difficult to work. So in the next couple slides I'll give you a few different exercise variations to try at home and I will explain to you the history of the instrument and why you may want to purchase one and there are a lot of good reasons so stay tuned. Now before demonstrating it I feel I should go over the history and the use of the chest expander. So typically speaking the chest expander is made up of two handles originally made of wood and steel. They were very high quality. You can find a lot of originals on eBay still that have the original springs and are totally usable. And they are attached together by these springs and or tubings. So there are different variations of the chest expander and even early on they had exercise tubing which gave way to exercise bands that we use now which is a very similar implement but not exactly the same. There are over 30 different movements possible to work and you can really target the entire body. There are even squat variations using the chest expander. It is absolutely wonderful and if you do a little bit of research online you can really find these great charts with chest expander exercises from the turn of the century and they work just as well now as they did then. So in my humble opinion the chest expander works best in addition to weight training. So I would never use it on its own. I would use it in tandem with weight training to get optimal results. So the chest expander was invented in the mid 1800s and was, was originally used as a medical rehabilitation instrument for people that had damaged chests or back. They could use this instrument to help rehab the uh, area and build muscle and strength back. Another thing is it is one of the first at home pieces of exercise equipment, something that would be marketed and sold to the general public. It was not a big machine, it wasn't a barbell, because you gotta remember when, the, when these were invented there was no such thing as an adjustable barbell. There were only globe barbells really, so those were fixed, very heavy, very large. This could be stored practically in a pocket and took up no room at home and you could really target the entire body. So in particular I love using the chest expander to target my back, but I'll get into, the, into that in a little bit. It was very common among Bronze Era strongmen, such as Eugene Sandow, William Pullum, and Bobby Pandor, among many other, others. George Hackenschmidt also used one. Pretty much every Bronze Era strongman used this exercise implement to develop their back and chests and their arms to a lesser degree. So you know it works, and you definitely know it works because it was carried over into the Silver Era by such athletes as John Grimmick and Reg Park. And Reg Park was actually a huge fan of the chest expander and mentioned that he really felt that this exercise tool helped him develop his back unlike anything else. So this is where I should explain, you can still purchase a chest expander new, but the quality is very much diminished. They're pretty much all made in China out of very cheap equipment, out of very cheap metal, and the springs themselves, a lot of the time when you stretch them, they don't stretch back fully. They they get loose extremely fast. So what I would recommend is hunt down an original from the 50s back. I have about five or six different pairs I use. I'm a collector of them more than anything, but I do use them all. And what I would do is get one of those chest expanders, one of the really old ones, and if you don't want to damage the springs, you can actually buy, I think, 12 inch springs at Home Depot, and they are wonderful to replace the springs there, and they will not break on you. They're garage door springs, so if you're in any other country that doesn't have a Home Depot, you can just buy a garage door spring, preferably a 12 to 16 inch variety, and attach that to your clips instead of your original springs, and make the weight whatever you'd like, add as many springs as you'd like, and that way you won't damage the original springs, and that's what I do. That's how I use this implement to train with, and I regularly do use it. And my three favorite exercises are the pull down from overhead, the archer movement, and the pull out in front. And you'll notice all of these really target the back. And that's where I think 
the chest expander really shines. It is probably the best at home piece of equipment to target your lats and your lower back. Moreover than even a barbell and dumbbell because it really replicates a lot of the movement pattern of like a lat machine, especially the pull down from overhead. It's a lot like a lat pull down. The archer movement's almost like a row and the pull out in front, it, there's really nothing like it. Uh, it targets your rear delts, your traps, your lats. It's unbelievable. If you've never tried a chest expander, it's highly recommended. And in the next couple of slides, I'll explain these three exercise variations, but there's 30, 40 more different variations of uh, exercises to target different muscle groups. So like I said, if you're interested, just Google chest expander exercises and you should find many of these charts. There's a York chart, Reg Park chart, there's the Sandow original chart, and I'm sure you will find something in there that you can use this implement for. And really, it'll help develop your, your back, your upper body in full, even your legs, like I mentioned earlier, there are squat variations with it. It's simply amazing. It's really a shame it's been forgotten about. On the next, so in the next couple slides, I'll explain these three exercise variations to you. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below or DM me in my Instagram and I'll help you out. So the first exercise I will be discussing with you all today is the pull down from overhead. So to explain this exercise briefly, you want to have the chest expander about at your hips and you want it to be taut. So your arms are spread apart to where there's no slack in the springs at all. At this point, you will lift it over your head and this variation in particular is in the front of the body, but there's also a pull down that goes behind the neck. And for that variation, I would want my hands to be completely above my head, almost perfectly straight. But this variation is more of a, I hate to call it a row, it's almost like a rear fly. So it really targets those rear delts, the traps, the lats, I mean really everything. But I use this movement mostly to target my lats, and that's how John Grimmick used it as well. He would use this exercise in particular to target his lats, and it gave him that really gnarly looking granite look to his lower back and those they almost look like tendrils or fingers in his lats and this exercise he attributed uh, that muscular development to it really helped him thicken up and give that that gnarly look to his back so this is one of my favorites it, it, you want to keep that that uh, stretching and pulling apart of the springs very slow and uh, what I like to do is I'll bring my chest to the springs now I'm not decreasing the range of motion uh, more so what I'm trying to do is flex my back and, and really pull those scapulas together and, and tear up that upper back if I can. And um, this exercise you can go fairly heavy on. And as you can see, another point I need to express is my hand placement is different than John Grimmick's on the right. And that's simply a different variation. There are multiple variations of each of these exercises. Like I mentioned, there's 30, 40 different exercises. So really whatever is more comfortable to you. They, they target the same muscles in essence. So I like to do them both. But for this example, I had my hands uh, pretty much just gripping over the handles and pulling straight apart. So keep the reps nice and slow, pull apart in full and completely lock out and pause and then back up to the top. And you will definitely see the results. This is one of my favorite back exercises to do at home. It's simply amazing and I highly re recommend all of you give it a try. So if this is any more reason you should buy a chest expander, uh, I, I hope you get one because it is a wonderful implement. So uh, now on to the next exercise. So the next exercise we will be discussing today is known as the archer movement. So if any of you have ever shot a bow before, this will be very, you'll be very accustomed to this movement pattern, but it is a little bit different. I used to be big into bow hunting and make, I actually made bows myself. So this was very natural to me. The only difference being the way I like to do it is I almost want to keep my forearm at a right angle with my upper arm. So I really stretch back and pull my upper arm back as far as possible and almost cramp the back. That's how I like to do it. And of course that straight arm, you want to keep it straight locked. Uh, at the elbow and at the shoulder. There should be no flexion in it at all. And you'll try to make that forearm and upper arm 
as perpendicular as you can, but it's very difficult to make that a perfect right angle, just as close as you can. And you'll feel that a lot actually in your forearms, just gripping it, in your triceps on the stretch back, your rear delts, your lats, your traps, I mean everything. It's a one, This is one of my favorite exercises, especially because I was really big into bow hunting when I was a lot younger. So the movement pattern is very familiar for me. And it feels wonderful. Of course, John Grimmick, Reg Park, they all use this. The Bronze Era Strongman as well. This was one of the staple exercises. And you see kind of how I just rotate there and do the next five on the other side. And for me, this is one of my favorite rear delt exercises, really. This is what I use it for, is to develop my rear delts. And it has really helped give me a nice capped delt look from front to back, from side to side. It's a wonderful exercise. And one athlete in particular that used it a lot was Reg Park. In every magazine you find Reg Park using a chest expander, he's always depicted doing this exercise, at least somewhere in there. It was one of his trademarks, one of his calling cards, and who can who can question the legitimacy of Reg Park? He had one of the most thickly muscled physiques of the Silver Era. So it just goes to show you this stuff really does work. And again, I'd highly recommend getting a chest expander really for this one exercise. There's nothing like it. It's amazing to use at home. And there's just so many great at-home exercises to really develop your back unlike anything else. So on to the final exercise. For our last exercise today, I will be discussing with you all the pull out and front. Now this is probably the most basic and most common chest expander exercise there ever was. Popularized originally by Eugene Sandow, but carried out into the silver era by John Grimmick and Reg Park, this exercise is fairly simple. As mentioned previously in the other exercises, you will have the chest expander at your waist, taut, with no flex in the springs. The springs should be straight out, and you will raise it up to about chest height with your arms straight. At this point, you will stretch the springs apart, bringing your arms back as straight as possible, and flex at the back, and bring your chest up to the springs. So you will bring the chest up to the springs, stretch the back, and man, this is an unbelievable rear delt exercise. It's equally as good as the last two we just talked about. And it's just a different angle. And if you know anything about Vince Gironda, I don't know his feelings in particular about the chest expander, but he was very big into different angles, hit the muscle from different angles. And there's no better instrument to hit the muscles from different angles than the chest expander. I mean, there's really none. It weighs nothing, so you're not fighting against gravity. You can be standing and, and, and pull these springs apart from all kinds of different angles. And that way it's very similar to bands that we use nowadays. You can do different kinds of row variations from all kinds of different angles because you're not fighting against gravity. It's very similar to that. And in a way, I'm happy that bands have gained so much popularity recently, but I'm also sad that the chest expander has had to fade away in contrast to that. It's, it's very much a shame because it was so, in many ways, ahead of its time. It was an instrument that we are just finding out now how useful these kind of motions are, and that's why they're becoming so popular again with different athletes, different American football players. You have basketball players using bands now with very similar movement patterns we see how effective these exercises are now. But for a time, this instrument was completely forgotten about, and it still is. It's been replaced in many ways, and that is really a shame. This exercise in particular is wonderful for the back, the triceps, the forearms, the entire upper body, even the chest. It works your rib cage by expanding that rib cage out and working on your breathing. And uh, you can go really heavy on this. You can use quite a number of springs and really stretch out and, and cramp that back unlike anything else. So more than anything, I really hope this video explained to you all how effective and wonderful the chest expander is because it really is a great instrument that has been forgotten about. And I would highly recommend all of you to shell out $10, $15 and buy an original on eBay or any secondhand market 
and you will not regret it. It's one of the best tools you can have at a home gym. And I hope you all enjoyed. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And that concludes this video. If you're interested in any more golden or silver uh, bodybuilding content, check out my Instagram at Official Forgotten Fitness. And also consider supporting Vince's original nutrition company, NSP Nutrition. They make some of the best merchandise, supplements, and books on the market. You can use my code VINCE10 at checkout for an additional 10% off your purchase. And until next time, this is Forgotten Fitness signing out. Bye-bye.